In the spring, I took a class at Saunders Machine Works in Ohio where I learned how to use Fusion 360 CAD and CAM software, and then I also had a hands-on multiple day class doing uh, CNC machining on Tormach personal CNC milling machines. And uh, so I want to talk about that experience and uh, how that affected me and how that helped me. My background is that I've been a manual machining hobbyist for a couple of years. I watched a lot of Tom Lipton YouTube videos and they taught me just about everything I knew about manual machining. I, I had like one or two quasi shop classes in like college and different little places where I learned a little bit about machining, but almost all of it came from YouTube videos, primarily Tom Lipton. So I had this background in manual machining. Then I got this job working in town at a CNC machine shop. I just showed them pictures of how hobbyist work that I had machined and they said that looks pretty good and they hired me on the spot and I worked there and I was feeling very frustrated because they wanted a worker and they did not want someone who was going anywhere. They didn't want to spend any time developing my skills, which you know maybe is understandable because they just needed people to operate the machine. And I would say, well, you know, I could come in on nights or weekends and you know off the clock, you know, try and study up and learn things. And they they didn't want to do that. They didn't have time for that. They they you know they're worried that I'd break their expensive CNCs and stuff. You know, learning and playing around on stuff. And it was just uh, it was pulling teeth to get any opportunities to develop and move forward. So after nine months of that, I enrolled in the uh, Saunders Machine Works class and I quit that job. So I went to Ohio for a week. It was seven days of classes. The first two days were weekend days, Saturday and Sunday, and we learned how to use Autodesk's Fusion 360. It was primarily focused on the CAD modeling, where you draw two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes, and you have like a, a visual you know, 3D rendering of a solid model of a part. And then also a little bit the CAM software, where you say, okay, now I want to cut this out on a CNC mill using a quarter-inch end mill and a, uh, you know, a whatever drill and this countersink and this and that and then uh, you know it, it programs the tool paths and it writes a computer code a GNM code that a, a machine like this would run on that's CAM software and so that was a two-day class and I had been trying to teach myself CAD software for quite a long time and I would get hung up on these little details uh, working by myself you know and you can google stuff but if you don't know the keywords and you know just like little things would hang me up and it was really tedious for me to try and teach myself CAD and CAM software then when I went to this class, uh, it was two eight-hour days where we're sitting in the computer lab. There's eight students and there's a teacher named Kevin who would, uh, he comes out like 10 times a year to Ohio from, I think, Minnesota. And he's a great teacher. He knows all about the software. And uh, so, you know, you'd get hung up on something like any other time. And then you'd raise your hand and he'd come over and he'd help you out. And then you'd be unstuck and you'd move on. And so by the end of the first day, and especially by the end of the second day with the, the CAD and CAM software, I felt like I was reasonably proficient in the software. I wasn't super familiar, but I knew how I could mostly navigate the programs and get done what I needed to get done. And that was a revelation for me. I think that single class is like $300. And I would say for anyone who's even kind of interested, who can possibly get to Ohio for a weekend, sign up for the class. It's totally awesome, totally worth it. Really good way to spend that kind of money, uh, in my opinion. Then there was another three-day class after that where you would get like a, you know, like a technical drawing of a part and and you would model it in uh, Fusion 360, you would program it in CAM, and then you would export the, the program to your thumb drive, and you would plug it into the, the machines that they have in their machine shop, the Tormach personal CNC milling machine, and then you would put in a piece of raw stock, and you would locate your work coordinate system, and you'd touch off your tools, and by noon of the first day, the students, uh, myself included, we were cutting good parts on the, the Tormach CNC milling machines. and so. There's these, uh, I feel like there's, there's a large myth about that CNC machining is really inaccessible and really hard to learn, and I want to push back against that. Because I think that there's some truth to that. Uh, I, I don't think that that needs to be the dominant narrative about learning CNC machining anymore, and I don't think it's helping anybody that that is such a pervasive idea about CNC machining. And so, the reason why I think this myth exists is, uh, it, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, if you wanted to learn CNC machining, it was that way. You had to program by hand. The, the CAM software that did exist was not as user friendly. It was very expensive. And uh, even, if, even if you could program in CAM, you're going to be tweaking things uh, at the machine or, you know, by hand, you're going to be changing the numbers and typing in extra lines of code. And that is uh, very dangerous, especially when you're, when you're new to it, because the machine doesn't know any better. If you say positive five 
five inches and you meant to say negative five inches, you could crash the machine. Depending on the expense of your machine and how hard you crash it, that could be like a $10,000 repair or more if you break the spindle. Uh, so I mean, certainly there's expense involved in the learning process or always uh, that comes with CNC machining. And I think for good reason, people have, uh, you know, made it out to be this complicated process because it, it traditionally has been hard to learn and expensive mistakes are made along the way as you're learning. And, uh, and so like it's, it's not always been that accessible. I think that's changed. I think nowadays you can learn the software pretty quickly. There's visual simulations uh, that show you how the tools move around the workpiece as it's cutting. And I think if you have a sense of CNC machining, or if you have a sense of machining period, like I had a pretty strong manual background for manual machining, but even if you didn't, I don't think it's that hard to learn anymore. I think you really need to get your machine set up right with the correct work coordinate system and the correct tool length offsets. That's not hard to do, you just need to be very careful that you always do it right. And then when you're starting a new program or any program that you haven't proofed out before, it's always really important to start it slowly and to have your hand on the speed control knob so you can bring the, the cutter in very slowly to the workpiece. But I just don't think that uh, CNC machining warrants this sort of um, uh, fear and and like uh, you know people seem to put it on a pedestal and think like well maybe someday or like you know as a hobbyist that's inaccessible to me and I feel like that narrative is is hurting uh, people's ability to to do good work and to learn and develop so um, the class I think is taught by this younger generation of machinists you know John designed the class and Kevin teaches it and uh, and they're computer nerds who teach uh, the software and they they love embracing the technology and I don't think they're Luddites about what you can do with the technology and they don't have a they don't have an interest in um, keeping people thinking that it's harder than it is and they want to see the students and the people who take the class take advantage of the software and how easy it is and so certainly there are gotchas certainly uh, you know some days uh, I've broken tools on this machine oh there goes the $80 cutter or uh, you know here goes a chunk of material and I will probably have more expensive mistakes here and there but what I've done along the way has been pretty remarkable in the time since I bought this machine I bought this for seven thousand dollars like a month after I took the class a couple weeks after I took the class and uh, and I have made you know many more thousands of dollars than that worth of goods and I've been selling them uh, to other bicycle frame builders that I made connections with over the past couple years and so um, you know having a product line and selling it that's a whole other can of worms but in terms of uh, you know learning the skills to run a machine like this and to design parts using CAD software uh, it's, it's really powerful stuff and you can learn it in days for like a couple hundred dollars at this class and I think it's a really valuable class and I also think that way of thinking about CNC machining is really important that that you have probably if you're interested in CNC machining you probably heard that narrative that idea about how it's it's really complicated and it's you know you gotta be really careful and you gotta walk on eggshells as you're learning uh, to some degree maybe but I think it's really worth challenging that idea so just to give people an idea if you don't follow me on Instagram and if you haven't seen my work this is something that I have made and produced in like the last eight months or so since I got this machine so this is a tube bender specifically for the bike frame building application people who build uh, fancy pants the tailored suit of the custom bicycle right like it fits someone's body size and riding style and all that stuff you make it out of lightweight tubing chromoly steel or titanium or something that kind of tubing is hard to bend and nobody was making and selling a tube bender that was marketed at exactly that segment of people uh, that meets their needs in a particular kind of way at a certain kind of price point so this was uh, I had the idea of this way before I even took that class on CAD and CAM but I would not have been able to make this without having taken that class and so what it is is a tube bender that is driven by a lead screw there's thrust bearings and, uh, and a bronze nut here and you drive it with a cordless drill it has a ridiculous amount of force 
within the tool so you could mount it to a lightweight card table or something and you wouldn't need like a you, you wouldn't need you know hydraulics to, to move it and you wouldn't need a really long lever if you did have a long lever like with a manual tube bender then you would need a really heavy anchor point and I'm, I'm thinking of selling this mainly to people who have a small shop who are limited on floor space and uh, who, who can't afford an industrial machine and they you know they don't want half their shop eaten up by some big device so having it in a small package is valuable but uh, I, all these little pieces here a, a lot of these resemble stuff that I was making in that class and I don't think I would have been able to design this uh, you know I don't think even the design of it I wouldn't have been able to get nearly this good without knowing how to use CAD and CAM software but since I do uh, it was almost like it just made everything so easy, you know, like I, I could have possibly sketched this out on pen and paper. I'm not very good at that and that would have been incredibly tedious. To make revisions along the way would have been very difficult. I mean, something like this here, I remember in the class we were learning how to do a, you know, a radial pattern and, you know, this is like a simple seven fluted uh, knob that's just, you know, it's nice to grab onto. I used to make stuff like this on my manual mill and I would use the bolt pattern feature on my digital readout to locate the holes and so I already had ideas about how I liked to make things and, and after I learned sort of the language of the CAD software and I knew how to model stuff, then it became a cinch to load raw stock into the machine, pick my cutters, program my tool paths, and and just make it and uh, yeah I just wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff without that education now you can learn most of these skills online from YouTube videos like the ones that John makes and other places and um, and certainly it's it's possible that I could have but I, I don't think ever in my life I've experienced uh, that feeling that feeling where you're like damn I'm glad I paid for that damn I'm glad <laughs> like that was worth it uh, this was one of those times where I was like wow that was really worth it to me for where I was at, the skills that I came into it with, and then what it's allowed me to do since. It has been so valuable. And so I just kind of wanted to like tell my story about the kinds of stuff that I've been able to do after taking that little class. I think I had been building uh, sort of a, a network, uh, you know, all these relationships with other people that ended up being my customers in the last year. I had been building that for years. I had been building sort of my understanding of like, the needs of the tools for these people uh, because I, I used to be you know in that in the camp of people myself and so um, I think a lot of people who take the class maybe wouldn't be quite as well poised to to use it as a springboard and immediately go into some uh, some new adventure in business or something but for me it has really unlocked a lot of potential and I'm really glad that I took the class well this is me and Clem saying thanks for watching thanks for watching